Hi guys, this is my English Ivy or Hedera Helix, and she does have a um, pole here because she she really did grow um, insanely. When I first got her, this was a present from my husband. First got her, I would say several months ago. She was in like the smallest pot. I would say like two and a half or three inch pot in diameter. And what I did before, she, I couldn't even put her in, in a pot, like my favorite pots, because the, the smallest one is a six inch. And to be quite honest, I did put her through the ringer because I never really wanted an ivy or an English ivy or a Hedera Helix plant. So um, she sits in front of a west facing window. However, she is on the very top of my shelf. So she gets a lot of indirect light all day. I would say about 12 hours. And for about, I would say, one to a little over two hours, she will get some kind of um, light. Like, a, I would say stronger, um, stronger than the light she usually gets during the day. And that's the only kind of light she has. I don't really move her any anywhere around. She just kind of is there. Before I put her in a Coco Coir um, hole, she really was like really bushy. And this was much shorter. Um, I've, again, I've had her for a few months. I just, I think I always forgot to add her in my vlog list for whatever reason. And in here, I use these pins. I, everything that I'm using, like the pole, this, I will link it down below. And also what I do um, add when, every time I do water her because um, I do mix like fertilizer in there, supplements, things like that. Um, I got to say, I have probably overwatered her and underwatered her and she is really resilient. Excuse me. This is a very invasive plant, and it is not not natural in the Americas. So, if you are in the Americas continents, please do not put this outside. It can actually kill, a, like everything. It is incredibly invasive. It actually kills forests. Um, this is native to Europe, and I think some parts in Asia, and something over there. It never really chokes anything there's something there that really does contain it and make sure it's not overly invasive but over here that it's not natural here so it's pretty dangerous some people when they think it's so beautiful to cover on their um, house or a building um, at some point it gets so intertwined and it gets so deep in regards to the soil and the soil can get pretty tangled that even a little bit of a part of the plant will still make it grow. There have been people that have had to really use fire to get rid of it. Even if they chop it down, it still comes back. So be very, very careful. I I would never um, put this in a disposal or flush it down a toilet or anything to do with pipe because this can definitely grow in there and you don't want to have like a like a flood in your home so be very careful in how you throw it out i usually um throw this out either in our compost i chop it up or i chop it um usually a lot of our greenery would be in the compost but now i think i'm mistaken i don't think i've ever put this in the compost i have never had this plant have get, given me any problems at all um so when i do see posts of people having a problem with their ivy i'm like why because this is probably like one of those plants that should be in the could not kill list. Again, I did try to kill it because I didn't like it. But it was kind of like, um, it was kind of like this. I, the way I tried to kill it, which is really pathetic. If I water it, let's say every eight days, I watered it in six days. That was my weak, pathetic attempt on trying to kill this plant. And it is a gift. And she has just gotten bigger and beautiful. And there is always new growth. And she is such a fast grower. I noticed there was a picture. I don't have it anymore. And if you do have my Instagram, you would see it. Um, It was like only a few months apart. And 
I have transplanted this, this plant four times, I believe. This is an eight inch pot and I think she should be okay there. And um, if you have any questions about this particular plant, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys all the time. And everything that I use, again, will be in the description section, including my social media accounts. I hope you enjoyed my vlog, that you're going to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't yet, and of course the bell so you're notified every single time I do upload a new video. Again, faces the west-facing window. I water it once a week. Um, this is another tip if you're new to plants. When you water a plant, if it goes through like the pot, that means you are overwatering it essentially. Whenever that there's um, extra water in there, always dump it after it's dripping. I would give it like when it does drip like that. What I usually do, that's usually for like a newer plant. I would put this in my dirty sink, and the saucer I would pour out. Um, or I would put it in like a plant that needed to be watered next. And I would just let it sit there and drip for, I would say, 10 to 15 minutes. And I put it back on the spot right after that and everything's fine. And then I try to remember how much it was. I usually, my watering can holds about 64 ounces or four cups. So I kind of know, like eyeball it, like if I should do one cup, two cups, three cups, four cups. Usually in this kind of size, one, two, I would say one cup, maybe even like three quarter cup to one half cup is okay. Um, I think two cups may be a bit much. Three cups is way too much. So after you water it a couple times, just kind of adjust it because sometimes like, if you see water running through it, you really are overwatering. You have to always think that this is in a container. And you can always water like a gallon of plant outside because it, if it's in ground. And even if it's a container because it has all the elements. It's got wind. It's got sun. It's got everything else. Indoors is very confined and very controlled. So you don't have all those other elements to kind of help um, dry that out. So a little bit goes a long way. It's always better to kind of slightly underwater a plant versus overwatering. Overwatering can tend to a lot of different things and can actually kill your plant faster than underwatering. So that's just a little tip there that I've learned um, being a plant parent for, um, for quite some time now. So this is my baby. And um, again, questions, comments, tips, advice, you just want to chit chat about this particular plant, let me know down in the comment section. I love hearing from you guys. I'll see you guys again next time on my update. Bye.